What's going on? You locked in with the Innovators YouTube, man. We're here in San Francisco right now doing something special, man. I got my guy T Midge, ATM, yeah. from Los Angeles, California, man. How you doing today? Feel blessed, feel blessed, and honored to be here, man. Feel blessed, and honored. I appreciate y'all letting me come through here today. Who you got here with you? Folks, Shay, right here. I'm saying out of Compton, you know what I'm saying? We got back where Dollar out of South Central, you know what I'm saying? Representing the ATM. Just to get into it, how you doing today? How's everything going for you? I was blessed, man. Every day I wake up and be able to make a dollar, and I'm blessed. Blessed to make a dollar. I'm blessed. I, I, I gotta ask you this, you know, we here in, in San Francisco right now, but you're originally from LA. Just talk about um, coming out here, what, what went into that, what was the thoughts behind that? Well, you know, like, uh, you know, like, in, in uh, 2015, I had like three medical dispensaries in LA. I had one on uh, 50, 51st and Central, I had one on 99th and Central, and I had one on 94th and uh, Avalon. But what I learned, you know, like, the money was good, but what I learned, you know, like, if you really want to make money, you got to mess with people that you don't know, and you got to mess with people that don't know the people that you know. And so, by me coming to the Bay, it was like a good experience because nobody knew me and nobody knew the people that knew me. Yeah. So, there was no way they can hate on me. And so, the doors, I'm saying, was open as far as like opportunities. And so, you know, basically, I'm saying, like, once I seen it, then we brought the found up there with this capital all, all, all the way along. What, what was it that kind of got you into the dispensary game, you know? Like, I, I do feel you though, because LA, like, yeah. it's a lot of dispensaries for sure. Yeah. Well, you know, like, uh, you know, like I said, I'm addicted to money, and it's like, not just dispensary, but it's like anything that's involved in money, you know, I'm going to put a percentage behind it and put my thought behind it. I'm trying to make it happen, so, you know, like, uh, you know, basically, I'm saying, you know, coming from the streets, I've been mean, indulging with marijuana all my life, and so, uh, when I first got into the dispensaries, I got into the dispensaries as a, uh, as security, you know, because I knew, you know, the majority, like, uh, as far as, like, they considered the real riders or game bands in L.A., I had, like, a connection with them, so, uh, the, the Iranians hired me as security so I could control the temple. Yeah. But, like, uh, my bad. But once I realized, like, uh, you know, I had to go, and that's when I, you know, took over and uh, started investing money in the space. Nah, I think that's a, a good investment for sure, and it's a, it's something that's gonna keep making money for a long time. Oh, no. <laughs> Everybody love that weed, you feel me? Oh, sure. <laughs> but uh, talk about growing up in LA. Like, what was that like? Oh, like, uh, you know, like, like I said, when I first, uh, like when I first, like, I came from like a good family, even though I lived in the in the heart of, of South Central, as far as like uh, the epidemic where everything went down. I came from a good family. And uh, like when, when I first started off, uh, I never started off, I'm saying, to want to be a banker. You know, I started off, like my first case ever was 12 and a half, and it was a drug case. You know, I was into selling dope and stuff like that. Like, as a kid, you know, I had, I knew something was wrong, but I didn't know it was wrong, but I knew that I was into the money. I knew money could change your life. Yeah. But uh, what happened, uh, when I was like in the sixth grade, I went to 99th Elementary. And so uh, I, I lived on 93rd, and this was Iran. Ironic now that I think back, it don't matter which way I took home, I always went into the East Coast and yeah. so we had to get out. Yeah. And so, uh, but make a long story short, you know, like uh, when they realized they couldn't beat me up, you know what I'm saying? Then they, then they, they put a little foul play in the game. And so once they put a little foul play in the game, I put a little foul play in the game. So they started jumping me. And so, you know, as, as, you know, 12 years old, you know what I'm saying, as a sixth grade, I realized, like, man, even if the nigga jumped me, as long as I focus on the one man, yeah. he gonna be hit him more than he hit me. And so, yeah. you know, once I realized that, you know, they, they, they couldn't handle it. And so, uh, I, it was uh, the last year of school, and uh, I was right there by my house. And uh, they, you know, they jumped me for the last time. You know what I'm saying? I'm gonna say we got down, right? Right. Uh, one, one, one thing about that, every time they did jump me, or uh, we got down, you know, I had like an uncle or somebody that was a big homie to, they big homie, you know what I'm saying? They, you know what I'm saying? So they took me back over there and I'd be like, they take me right in the heart of me. Like, which one of you going to get down with? I'm like, I'm going to get down with him. He yeah. the one, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and so, and so after a while, you know, they realized that that wasn't going to work. But uh, so they, they put out a knife on me. Just one day we put out a knife. And so my mom, you know, my brother, I had an older brother that was into, uh, he was from uh, 8'9", kind of swan. So he was into the banging. So, 
And so uh, my mama just told me one day, you know, as she seen you, you swab and do it, blah, blah, blah. She like, well, you know, I will hand it to a brother. And so that's what I did. But like, even when I went over there to 8 9, like, I didn't go over there to be a follower. I went over there to be a leader. So I started 9 Deuce, 9 Second Street down this morning, you know? Yeah. And so, you know, I always like, even as a kid, I always been a banker, you know, like, you know, I live on, I live in the 90s. You know, my interviews, so called interviews, was on 97, like yeah. four blocks away from yeah. my house. And it's then, really crazy yeah, to think about yeah, it. Yeah, and then, then the hood that, you know, I got put on was 8 9. I'm like, man, that's like about too many blocks away. Yeah. So, uh, I, you know, it just came to me like that. I'm protecting these niggas and making sure they're getting home night. But so I leave the hood, I still got to go get out with these niggas. So, but I did, I started 92nd Street. Sure. Like, I would have asked this the right way, but like, what go like how how do you start 92nd Street? Like how does that happen? Like what, what uh, like say what tell me what you can tell me. You don't gotta go too in detail, but like how does that happen? Well I'm gonna tell you like this though, like uh uh you know it, it, it wasn't easy though, you know, like uh, I had I had like I say I, I uh, you say I like a hundred homes. You don't say a hundred homes but, like two of them was like wooden. You know what I'm saying as far as like yeah, go ahead and keep pushing but it was other homies and shit that was like, man, this dude, yeah, it's just uh, living a fantasy and shit like that, right? But what I did, I just kept pushing my line and, uh, and, and made it happen. But uh, I was always fair, you know? So it ain't just like 90 seconds, I'm saying, that I, I made, but even 89, so, you know? So different dudes that I, you know, say like, out of one, say three dudes. One dude, I'm gonna put you on a nine dudes. The dude right here, from eight, nine dudes. And, uh, you would be from 89, so I, that way the gap would never be like separated. No, I get you. But, but it was hard because I, I just didn't have to get down and, 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 and squabble with the so called enemies, but I had to squabble with the homies too, you know, because a lot of them didn't respect it at first, you know. Yeah. But it became good. But now they, but now they say it though, so it's all. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, do you feel gang banging has changed from like, now looking at how it is kind of now to like when you got into it yeah you know like uh when i got into it you know like you could you, you could basically like trust your friends you know what i mean like you know like back then it was the community everybody was from the community so you knew the mother you knew, the aunt, you knew somebody in the town and, and vice versa right and so it was more love but i think i think uh i think when the division really started coming in is, is when uh dope came into the picture I mean, that the dope kind of like at first nobody really took it serious, you know what I mean? Yeah. But, but once the, once people start seeing the, uh, the prosperity of like other individuals that was bubbling off of it, then you know that that brought about the hate and all that. But as far as like gangs, you know, like the whole first, you know what I'm saying? We, you know what I'm saying? We did what we did when we did what we did. But as far as that, it was never set up on good principles in the beginning. You know what I mean? So it's like. It was never expected to become better, but worse, you know what I mean? So, to be honest, you know, as I grew up, you know, I, I, thought, I went to YA, uh, I had got like 14 and a half, 14 years when I was like 15, 15 and a half. Yeah, 14 years when you was 15. Yeah. Yeah, and so, and, 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 uh, and so, uh, you know, I, I truthfully thought, man, by the time I got out of YA, I thought this shit was going to be over with. But it got kind of ridiculous, because when I, by the time I got out of YA, they had hood days. I'm like, man, what's the hood day? You know what I mean? There was no hood days when man when, when, before I went to Y they never had no such thing as no hood day. You know? And so now, you know, you know, we had like some shit like uh say like your year. If it was like uh say eighty nine, you know, ninety eighty nine that was your year, but yeah. as far as like a month and a day, nah, they never did no stuff like that. You know, that that's all new. So how do you feel about that? You you like it, you you don't like it? Well, you know, basically, you know, I, I think it's all, uh, it's all foolishness, you know what I'm saying? Because, you know, at the end of the day, they ain't making no money. You know what I'm saying? Like, uh, like you know, like like I said, you know, like, uh, I, I did a lot for the hood, you know? And, uh, and if it wasn't for me, it wouldn't be, you know what I'm saying? Half of the things that's going on over there right now. But but it's like, at the end of the day, what I came from, you know? It's like, it, 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 I, I can't go to a... Uh, to uh, the water power place and say, man, I'm from 89 family, man, can you pay my hustles? Yeah. Can you get my bills paid, you feel yeah. And so I think that, I think it's, it's irrelevant now, you know, and I think that, uh, you know, like, and, and it's sad because it's like, you know, if you do play the game, at least play the game and know the rules. And so you got, you got dudes that know every sign. You 
you know, every sign. He's like, oh, okay, it's a bebop. When you see the men, you go, say, okay, that's these codes right here. Yeah. But then they get arrested and they don't even know the first thing about the Constitution or what, what amendment to, to, to throw in a motion, to throw yeah. in a case to speak. Yeah. And so I think, I think if you don't play the game, you know the rules. Nah, that, that's real shit. I ain't gonna lie. Yeah, Cause, uh, you're right though, a lot of people do get in the streets and they do do shit that will have them in jail, but they yeah. they wanna know how to like defend themselves or how to get off. You feel me like Yeah, then, and, and then I think it's then I think it's like, you know, it, it's like it, it's like a hypocrisy, it's like hypocritical. Look, man, real talk, man, I am seen the gang dudes get pop, and I ain't never seen nobody sit there. No, the only dude that I kill, they try to run and get away. Yeah. So who I'm gonna keep playing? I see him trying to get away, but he don't make it. So I'm gonna keep hanging out and doing that shit if he's trying to get away. Yeah. And then I know niggas, I got a gang of homies in jail that I talk to and they want to come home. Yeah. So what the fuck, I'm gonna keep playing with mine for? Yeah. So, so I, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Nah, that, that, and, and, and that's something that I do think about, you know, um, even living in LA now, you know, I've interviewed a lot of dudes that do gangbang, but yeah. my biggest thing is always like, at what point do you say, like, Nah, I, I, I gotta. I want to do something different. But yeah. the but the thing about it is, is like what what I feel with the game bag shit is like you can say I'm not gonna be fully involved in it as I was, but when you see your enemy, they, they don't care if, if you say you, yeah, right. you took a break. <laughs> well, no, I'll tell you this, man. With the exception of me, real talk, they know me, and they know, man. Like I really don't have them. None of the niggas want to be in this man. You feel me? Like, like being light, growing up on the east side of South Central LA, I had to go 10 times harder to work them niggas. Yeah. You feel me? So if they threw a rock at me, I threw bricks at them. Yeah. They really just <laughs> so it's like, political, so they don't, so I don't, I don't have no enemies. But, it, but, it, but it's ironic that, you know, like once you do change your life and, and you decide, I'm saying, to, to attack tech, to attack success, then those who once were friends or family members mm-hmm. become the enemy. As far as like 9-7, man, I go hang out with them right now. I go with the homies, I'm gonna be strapped up. Yes. And I'm gonna get and I'm gonna be like I'm, and I'm gonna be like Drake. I'm like all the niggas that if you wanna hang out with me, you gotta go through a security. Yeah. Uh, you really? wanna go with me, you gotta go through a security. Come on. We're gonna bat you down and uh <laughs> send you to kick you. Yeah. Other than that, I ain't fucking with you. You know what I'm saying? Like uh it's like uh, you know, I I am a firm believer that uh, you know, like uh some people that don't wanna change and uh no matter what you try to do or no matter what type of influence that you try to give to them, they, they're going to hate you. Some people going to hate you, you know? And so I learned not to put myself in $5 or $10 situation. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Right now, I'm saying uh, uh, the police and the criminal ain't going to hang out. So what the fuck I'm going to hang out with some broke niggas? Yeah. We don't understand that the language ain't the same no more. Yeah. And so, I, you know, it's over with, you know what I mean? And plus, I'm saying like, you know, like once you know, know the truth, like you gotta look at it like this, man. Like I know a lot of people, I'm saying that died, and I know a lot of people they got got killed, right? I mean, and, and going jail, but nobody can really tell you why the war this year. Everybody can tell you, you took your wings and ran and watched and started the Crips, but to be honest though, who started the blood? They can say LA Brown, they can say this, but the yeah. most important thing, who was the first Crip or the first blood that got killed? What shit happened? Yeah. Was it the Compton, Watts, LA? What was that? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So my whole thing, if, if, if you're doing something and you don't know why you're doing it, then you're the same. Yeah. Something wrong with you. Yeah. So I don't fuck with you. If you're going to be doing something, you don't know what you're doing. No, no, I, I completely agree with you on that. I think uh, I think people need to hear your mindset on that for sure because a lot of people do kind of get into game making and with no like yeah. side of the future and no plan. Yeah. You feel me? Yeah, I really and do you end up just crashing out? Crashed out. Plan. Y'all man, as soon as they get the bus and they get to run, look, real talk. Yeah. Look, we we we, we just had the homies up here, real talk. Pop Rook. Hell fast. We just had the homies up here, but why we gonna have the homies? We know when the bullets get to pop, them niggas are running. Yeah. We get security, they gonna sit here and dive on us and they gonna shoot back. Yeah. It's already proven. Yeah. Niggas that gang bang ain't ready to die. Yeah. <laughs> it ain't ready to go to just playing. Yeah, yeah. Like Y'all man? Shit. If a nigga, you know, he a bust on his homie all day, run him down, chase him down, and then as soon as the police come, he gonna yeah. drop his gun, all that shit. So no man, you gotta be fair, you know what I mean? If you can chase a black man all day, have the same energy when the police come to tell you to freeze, you know what I mean? Yeah. That is so sad because, you know, like, it's like people perpetuate and they push in a street code that never exists. They never exist. 
you know, it's a saying like it's going on in the wrong thing, so we're a street code like, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's like, so it, it, it always, there's no honor. I, I think, I think instead of people focusing on pushing the street code, I think they need to focus on credit. Yeah. The street code can't get you no more for the house, but credit can get you. Yeah. Yeah. That's how I looked at it, man. I just feel like as you get older, you start realizing in order to be good, like you can't be good at life and good at, at, at this. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, you can't be good at that. Like, yeah. The more you get good at that, that more that come down. You right. feel me? Exactly. So it's like, come on, man. Like that's that's saying, it's real life. Like, yeah, you can't just so, it. It's a true saying. You can't do two things at one time. Only thing, two things you can do at one time is move your hand and talk for them. So, yeah. <laughs> that's for it. You can't sell dope to gang bang. And so, all these gang bangers that's, that's working, right? You ain't no gang bang. Yeah. You're working. Yeah. You feel me? If you go to college and you say you're gang bang, you know, you're a college student, man. You, just a nigga that's suicidal. <laughs> you suicidal, man. And it confused me. That's all you is, man. You know what I'm saying? You don't know if you want to go to college or die. Yes. You know what I'm saying? So that, that's all that. But, but, but like I say, man, you know, definition, you know what I'm saying, of, of insanity is doing the same thing repetitiously. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know nobody successful who's made it out the hood, but those who change. You know, the, the no, sure, definitely got to change. Yeah, I feel like at the end of the day, you never really get your full respect unless two things: you dead or you got the help of you know, like. Yeah, and, and, and just like we just said, and, and let's go to your question now. Man, you say, "How do I feel about bang man, yeah. bang man?" Like now, you die, these niggas just gonna put their long live, man. No, damn, long live, nigga, go retaliate. Yeah. If you love me, yeah. don't don't yeah. give me forever, and so. It's, it's a difference now, you know, like, back when I was coming up, I'm saying, like, while the homie on the ground, bleeding, you know what I'm saying, we retaliate. But now these niggas, they just want to go in there and show the gun on, on Instagram and long live, who, who I, and all that shit, to play like they, you know, because cause now it's about everybody on the party, so I'm saying, criminals is a party now. Yeah. They ain't mad, they want to party, man. They trying to get positive, trying to drink, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah so, so, it's so man. In your opinion, who started the Bloods? In my opinion, in my in my personal opinion, they say they say L.A. Brown, but I think the FBI. Real really? Dark. And the only reason why I say that, and I'm gonna be real, because if they look at history, every every for every organization that was started, black, brown, or, or minority organization, the government set up an opposition. Look. If you look at gangbanging and you look at jail, jail is a billion dollar industry, prison. They got more prisons than colleges. They got more uh, uh, juvenile facilities than junior colleges. Look, y'all ever, ever thought about this? Look, all, when you look at your community around there and you visualize, you see a lot of elementary schools, right? But how many junior high schools in that community? About one or two. Yeah. So where all the kids go out of elementary? You got five elementary schools with two junior highs and one high school. Why? Yeah. Really? But then, because it's trained, you either go to the graveyard or go to the, or go to the juvenile facility. Yeah. Jealous of business. White folks, if they wanted to, they can start to sit overnight. But it's a business. See, I had to realize after a while, I'm saying, I had to realize that I'm sending other people kids to school. Let me change my life and let me send my own kids to school. That's it. You know what I'm saying? Like, we may think that we doing what we want to do, right? Because under the democracy that they give us, right? And we think we all this, but we, make, we but we ain't nothing but a painting. We ain't nothing but a check. Yeah. We living in a capitalist society. And so crime pay. They just don't pay the criminal. That's it. And once niggas realize that, then they change. Yeah. But a lot of these niggas lost, man. You know, you, you look at people back in the days, you know, you hear your, you hear your grandma and all these folks talking, man, I want to look at roots. I oh, man, I can't, that makes me mad. These bitch ass niggas go in the movie looking at 12 years of slavery and get out and kill them. I don't respect them niggas like that. I don't respect them niggas like that. Man. You don't got no type, of, no type of emotion, but the white folks, you know what I'm saying? That is a good movie. Yeah. But niggas go kill and rob. Yeah. I don't respect them niggas like that. You know what I mean? And also, man, I wanted to say, it's a lot of niggas, bitch ass niggas, though, really went on these game documents. Right line, because when they really look at the statistics, and you can go look, look it up, right? But my area where I come from really gangbang. These niggas really gangbang for real. 
The murder rate in my area was, was, high. was, was higher than the whole fucking game. Yeah. Everybody from my neighborhood was killers. Yeah. These niggas wasn't jealous, so what the fuck are they talking about? Yeah. And so all these bitch ass niggas want to take responsibility because I was trying to figure out because I read a lot of history. Yeah. I was trying to say, who started this shit? Because white men don't want to take responsibility, and, and but these dumb ass niggas want to take responsibility. So we the niggas, we, you niggas, we gonna come out at when it's all said and done because you're responsible for these mothers, her, and these kids down. Yeah. See, I respect them niggas as they would have said. If you look at most of them niggas on the game documentary. The niggas look like they don't got nothing going on. Yeah. So I can respect the niggas and say, man, I started the hood, uh, but I was wrong. Look at me now. I'm still, I wasn't shit when I was a kid. And I grew up not being shit. Yeah. Why well, perpetuate something that don't that don't don't mean that? It's like Christmas. Yeah. No, everybody knows Santa Claus don't exist. Yeah. All right, but they keep the shit going, and that's that's like with this bullshit. It ain't no street color. Your own home, your own folks are kids. If it's street, they, if it's a street color, then why well, you gotta watch your homes? Straight up. You know what I mean? If it's a street code, I'm saying why the homies, I'm saying when a nigga get killed, why the homies don't take care of the nigga family? Uh, what a nigga try to do, fuck nigga bitch, and, and his daughter, she's old enough, some of these niggas sick, they fuck the kids too, they sick, man. And weird, dog, and that's why I walk away from a lot of this shit too, because a lot of them old Z niggas, man, real tough, man. Them little names they be having on the girl, man, a lot of them, a lot of them dudes and kids, man. Yeah. I lost respect for a lot of these niggas, man. A lot of these niggas out was guns, that I, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, there was guns too. Yeah. Both ways though. Yeah. They discriminate. You know what I'm saying? They, they, yeah. they discriminate. They, they fuck with men. Yeah. And I don't respect that shit, man. And no, I feel that. So that's sure. why, so for a lot of these bitches, I said, this is why I don't cheat. And you know, I don't be fucking with y'all because I know, you know I'm saying, your nigga and they got AIDS. So that's why I'm fucking with you, man. To be honest, man. That's why. Can you talk about, you know, what was it like, you know, going to jail at, at such a young age, like? Well, uh, I'll tell you this, uh, after a while, it became a blessing, right? And the only reason why I say that is because uh, I don't know how to read until I was like 18. Right? Really? Yeah. And so uh, it became a blessing to me because uh, I learned, you know, and I and I didn't learn because the jail's learned, but I learned because this one teacher, right? This one teacher told me uh, I had my hair out in the fro one day and I was uh, going through trade. She like, uh, you look like George Jackson. You know, I'm like George Jackson, right? But I'm like, okay, you know, because I thought, you know, I've been in jail at this time, like six years. I'm like, oh, I'm well, for this stuff, like, yeah, yeah okay, I'm telling you anything you want to. Anything you want to say? Yeah, yeah, I'm trying to think of, you know. So, <laughs> I told her, I'm saying I don't know how to read, but she, you know, this she inspired me, just put it like that. You know, like one year later, man, it, it wasn't a book, I'm saying not just her, but the faith, you know, because at first, you know, I didn't believe, but she kinda changed my belief system, right? And then uh, once she changed my belief system, and, you know, I just you know, one year later I was able to read every book that they that uh, was given, but because uh, I took, I took uh, it was an honor to me, so the books I read was like educational books, you know, like all this shit, like Donald Goins, it was niggas gonna read Donald Goins, I'm like, yeah. reading about Donald Goins, I was never like that, you know? But, so I read books that, you know, educational books, books on how to become a better banker, like theology and stuff like that, things that, yeah. that was it. Why? Why was it that you didn't learn to read to that age? Was you, it wasn't because you didn't want to, or you was it like what, what was it? Well, I, I, you know, I, I would blame the school system most of all because they kept passing, yeah. <laughs> you feel me? And then I would blame my family, though, you feel me? Because uh, you know, as far as like, uh, I don't, I, I think the uh, parents. I think my my my, my mother, uh, my mother in particular. I had my father who was doing this. My mother in particular, you know, what I'm saying she didn't, and she didn't have time to invest in my education, you know what I mean? Or uh, have time enough that I can know how to do. You know what I mean? And so uh, they just let it go through. You know, so by uh, it was a blessing. You know, like I say, when I was uh I wanna say by between six and eight, you know, I remember standing in a, in a, in a line with my mother, I'm like, man, why black folks? Why don't we always laugh for everything? Right? I had you know as a kid I thought about this stuff. And then, you know, so I went on that journey, 
you know, like when I first went to YA, like, you know, believe me, you know, like me, you know, and they know the truth, you know what I'm saying, but I was so into shit all the time that I got blamed for a lot of shit that happened, even though I didn't do it. Right. Right. And so this one dude, you know, he wanted to get himself popped up, don't got nothing to do with me, right? But he told the police it was you. Yeah, you feel me? And so, uh, you know, So he got I, accused of murder. Yeah, murder and attempt. Yeah. But when I first went, when I first went, you know, it, and it's so ironic, the police did that, right? But it's so ironic because when I first went to jail, I had like five murders though. Because, uh... You had five right? murders? Five murders, man. I, had, I was going to three different courts fighting five murders, man. That was, and, and the only reason that happened is because of my brother wound up getting killed. Remember, I had an older brother from the hood. He wound up getting killed by, by the uncle, by the so-called... I'm a dude from the hood, I was yeah. saying, right? And, and so... You know, they knew he did it, you know? And so they tried, you know, they, they looked at me, they're like, oh, this nigga, he's 15, he gonna kill me. And so they put pressure on me. You know, so what I did, you know what I'm saying, I just, uh, I, beat, I beat a couple cases and I uh, got, uh, got lost the last one, you feel me? But the one I lost is the one I really should have beat. You know? Yeah. That's what I'm saying. But, why, did you, why did you lose that one and beat the other ones? Oh, because they, they had this old weird ass nigga, right? Real talk, weird ass nigga. And man was saying I did, and he know I didn't do this. A witness. Yeah, witness. You feel know? You know, but he, he know I didn't uh, have nothing to do with this shit. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, he out of fear, you know, because I was aggressive, though. You know what I'm mean? saying? And, and so, uh, like I said, I didn't have no daddy, so I had nothing to do. Obviously, you know what I'm saying? I had a mama, but you know what I'm saying? She was caught up doing the thing she was doing, so the streets, I was, the streets had me. You know what I'm saying? And so uh, I was aggressive. You know, uh, you know. At, now that I look back, I'm gonna call it anger because, I, you know, I, I was this kid looking for answers, and so I, I took it out of, uh, in the streets. You know, like, I, I, what's going through your head fighting that many murder cases that were done? I, I gotta be some stressful shit. Oh, you, you know, like, uh, man, <laughs> you know, like, uh, it, it was a trip because uh, at this, you know, like, uh, I grew up. In the church. Now, I ain't gonna say I grew up in the church, me, but I grew up in the church because my, my, my mother and, and them, they, they forced me. You had to go to church. You know, most of the time I was safe, but, and so I, I, I didn't have that type of faith. And so, I, you know, in the beginning, it was hard because, uh, you know, like my grandmother and, and them, they, my grandmother and my mom, they like, uh, Jesus. I'm saying, Jesus, Jesus, what are you gonna do it? Yeah. They're gonna get you out. I'm like, damn, well, why I ain't out? You feel me? And so, it, it, it was emotional at first. You feel me? But, uh, it, you know, it was disturbing, you know, as far as uh, the belief system, but, uh, you know, uh, you know I, I endured it, I beat it, you know yeah. what I'm saying? And uh, it made me a better person, and, uh, and, and it asked a lot of questions about, you know, uh, remember I said, as a kid, I had questions of knowing, like, what was wrong with the system. Yeah. And I found out the system is a corrupt system. And, uh, That's crazy to have. And uh, it caused, you know, like, and the reason why I say that, because I can see a person lying and sitting there, son. I can see the police lying and going along. But damn, now when it comes to the DA and the judge and the lawyer, like, what's going on? Everybody don't know this, son. And so that's when I realized the corruption, but then I realized, like, you know, justice talks. You know what I mean? And so, you know, a lot of people don't realize that Bob, Bob Barker said it better, you know? The price is right. <laughs> he wouldn't talk about the family feud. He talk about the president. He don't know the prison industry. Yeah. You know? So. <clears throat> so, so how much time did you end up doing for the, the oh. one that you convicted for? Well, I want I want to get, I, I, did four, I did eight years off of 14. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so, uh, but, uh, you know, I, I was aggressive. You know, I, you know, I knew that nigga was going to come to jail, but he never came to jail. Yeah, you know what I mean? But I was hoping he'd come to jail, but I was gonna work his ass, so I just took it out on the house. And uh, that's, that's what I did, you know, for the last, uh, I say for the first uh, seven years, uh, and I, you know, of course, six and a half, I took it out, I'm saying, just going hard, you know, even like even when my family came and seen me, my family already knew, you know what I'm saying, if I see this dude, I'm saying, y'all might as well just get up and start leaving, I'm yeah. saying, I'm gonna get him, you know? But, uh, like I say, that woman, that teacher, I'm saying, everything happened according to, I'm saying, the natural law, I'm saying, I say, the universal 
I'm saying, God, you know, it's like once I, I see her and I thought, you know what I'm saying, you know, the little flotation, the little thing with that, and she inspired me to learn how to read. And once I started reading, I started really realizing that this shit was a trap, you know? you know. You know, like they say, knowledge is power, you know. And they say, like, if you want to, you know, they say if you want to hide the truth, put it in the book. But, but it's so sad now, you know, because you look, you look at history, and a lot of our ancestors got killed for getting caught with a book. I got killed for learning how to read, and now these niggas don't even want to get caught with a book bag, you know what I'm saying? And so it's sad, man, you know? And, it, and it's sad because we live in an information age where the knowledge is not, you don't have to read no book, no. You don't even have to, any book is already a part of You know what I'm saying? So <laughs> you already have to have patience and listen, so the information out there is really no excuse, you know? Can you talk about, like, how you grew up, um, like, you talked about yeah, not having a father in your life, but like, how was your household? Here? Like, what was it like just being there with your mom, or what was it like? Well, you know, like, a, man, you know, like, a, my mom, you know, she, you know, she, to be truthful, you know, she don't know that I know, you know, but she, she had a habit, you feel me? And uh, she used to send me outside uh, with a neighbor kid, and, uh, uh, by the grace of God, I'm still here, you know, like I said, you know, like, man, I was, a, you know, I was a big kid, you know, you know, and uh, I remember she had a, a, a 22, you know, that I had took as a kid, and uh, I had sawed it off, man, I just, in a while, but I remember as a kid, you know, I used to uh, light a fire right in the garage, and I used to take the bullets and put them in the fire, and, once they started boxing, I used to run out laughing. You know what I mean? But when I think about all that now, I said, man, I, I'm lucky I'm one of them statistics that one of the kids are now. Man, they got killed at a young age because of negligence. Yeah. You know? And so that's why, you know, I don't really respect parents, you know what I'm saying, that don't take it, don't really analyze or watch the kids. You know? Because I, I, I know, you know, I, I was there, you know, I used to sniff gasoline, man. I don't know, I don't know what made me do it. You know what I'm saying? But still gasoline until I passed out. I'm, I'm lucky that I'm, I can still yeah. rationalize and I'm lucky I'm still here. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, like, damn, you know? So, it's a blessing, you know? But I look at it, you know, it's a purpose. I had a purpose, you know? And, uh, you know, like I said, I've been shot up and all that. You know what I'm saying? And, uh, by the grace of God, you know, I'm still here. And I realized, once I realized my purpose, and then realized I had a purpose, and that's when I started to attack my purpose. That's when my family, you know what I'm saying, so-called friends became them. They tried to give me a signal, you know? As as far as your relationship with your dad, did you never met your dad ever or I will tell you this, man. <laughs> Look, I seen him by two times, right? But if I seen him I wouldn't know him. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. you know, like two times like man. So, I didn't have a relationship you know, with him, but I think uh, now that I hear certain stories, right, as far as uh, what my mother said, yeah. I think that uh, I, know my, I know my father was trying to get me, that he wanted to be in my life, but uh, from what I understand, uh, her, you know, my mother and her side of the family didn't want him to be a part of the life. So, Growing up the way I grew up, you know. So, nah. but, but, but one thing, one thing I can say that I learned from that is that, uh, and, and I'm not the only one that grew up without a father. I know a lot of niggas like that, but I do know a lot of dudes that did have fathers. But one thing I learned, you know, from that, I always said that I would never be like him. So that's why I'm so, you know, proud of being to my kids now. So, yeah, that was, that was my next question. I was going to ask you, like, did that? Growing up like that, like what what impact did that have on you when you became a father? I'm sure that made you like really want to be there. Yeah, 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 it really did. You know, like uh, you know, because of like my uncles, like you know, I had relatives, they had their dad. So, you know, like I spent a night over their house or went to the movies like that, it was like, you know, hearing them say daddy or stuff like that, that's the time that it did affect me. You know, but like I say, 
uh, I took that aggression out on the streets, so, you know. But uh, it, it did play a major role. You know, I think all kids, you know, regardless of if the parents like each other or not, you know, they should, the kids should feel to be to be to see both of them be a part of life. I do believe that, you know what I mean? I believe that, you know, it, it do take uh, 24 chromosomes of each individual to make that child in order to control 48. So it's more than the chromosomes, it's also the guidance. You know, so it need, you know, some of the mother guidance, you know, and it needs some of the father's guidance. You know, they can do that. You know, but, you know, now, you know, unfortunately, you know, like, the women I deal with, they don't understand that. You know what I'm saying? It's like, uh, a lot of people, man, like I said, they keep me a secret, man. You know what I mean? A lot of people, man, like, they know, they know I'm versatile for their strength, though. And, uh, they know that, you know, and so they, you know, they try to create enemies for me, you know? So a lot of people, you know, like if I'm a fuck with them, they want to be in. You know what I mean? That's how we feel. So I say fuck them. <laughs> yeah. You know, the first thing, I, but they don't want, they don't understand that. But the thing that very motivates me is them. You know what I mean? Like I live in a town, I don't know, I'm the only thing out there that I own businesses. How do you, you know what I'm saying? Just imagine how to make this Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Hey. For sure. You know what I'm saying? Instead of being motivated, you rather hate. Me. You feel me? Does that surprise you in any way? No, that no, no, the no. people... Hey, listen. Hey, <laughs> look. After leaving L.A., 8 mile, with 92nd Division, and that hood, oh, and that's about, I learned, man, I learned the best in my hood, you feel me? So I got a nigga in the hood, the trickster. I call that nigga the trickster. Everybody to see if I just nigga with me and so, and a couple other people. Come on, man. Long game, man. I'm saying, yeah. name always involved. You should have nickname with the Jets. Yeah. Come on, man. And then, nigga, weird shit. They got a nigga with cell phone game. Remember, I just see my grandmama doing that shit. Granddaddy, old uncle. Ain't no nigga selling dope. Ain't no nigga game ain't gonna keep no motherfuckers phone for no 20 years. Mm -hmm. Come on, man. I can imagine the motherfucker features on that phone. They found that phone 20 years ago. Had a phone with you feel me? Yeah. Come on, man. Yeah. But niggas don't look at that as a suspect. But when you bring shit up like that, they look at you like that, man, or something wrong. Because a lot of niggas confident. Yeah. You feel me? Yeah, no, that's what, that, it's a lot of reasons that, you know, it, it's like I, I realized, man, like, come on, man. I live in a neighborhood, according to statistics, with the number one murder rate of the whole gang. They can look at that. That ain't me, Sam. Yeah. That's right. statistics. Yeah. Right? They gonna put it they, they gonna put it for me somewhere. I heard that in the documentary for sure. You feel yeah, me? That was, they read that was a statistic. Yeah, that's the justice, man. That ain't me. Look, they didn't go to that jail. On on, on Del Rock, yeah. when they had Del Rock, we was the deepest. My homie just was our street. Not the hood. We had homies in there for the hood, but I'm talking about our block. So my block in particular was different from the hood. <laughs> you feel me? Everybody from my block. When I say the hood, that, that's just an 89, 89 and 89 notes. Yeah. That was, we had a, it was unusual people in that community, you know, I, I, I can say that, right? But at the same time, I'm saying it's a learning experience for me because I, I learned how to deal with people, you feel me? I'm not the best man for them, niggas. You, you talked, uh, you said something that stuck with me, you talked about uh, finding your purpose. Uh, I wanted to ask you, like, how hard was it to find your purpose? And, like, do you have any advice? Because finding, I feel like finding your purpose is a hard thing. Yeah. And, like, for me, for example, I went through college and everything not really knowing what I wanted to do. And it took, it, I didn't really learn what I wanted to do until I got out of college. But the whole time I was there, people asking me, what is it that you want to do? What's your goals? Like, what, like, and I'm like, shit, I'm trying to figure it out. And, you know, interviewing, I kind of figured out, okay, that's something I really like to do, but, like, it took, like, a lot of trial and error to get to there. But, like, how did you find your purpose, and uh, what advice do you have to somebody that wants to find their purpose? Well, you know, like, uh, the first thing, I, I should say, uh, once you do find your purpose, or oh, I get the urge, want to change, 
you have to have the courage first. Right? Because uh, it takes courage, you know what I'm saying, to walk away. And that was one of the hardest things for them, really the purpose. You know, because one, 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 one thing, I know my purpose, I always wanted to be different. I always knew I wanted to live there. So I just had to find out what I liked it in order to fulfill my purpose. You know? I knew I liked the money, right? I just had to find a legit way to make it. You know what I'm So that's what it was. Yeah. And so that was my purpose. But my purpose is to make others happy. That's why I go around and try to create businesses. That's why I go around and, and try to you know, send messages periodically through music. That's why I go around and try to inspire people. You know, that's what I want. That's my purpose. My purpose is to let people know that you can do it. That's my purpose. Up. As far as like my pleasure and my happiness comes from seeing other people happy, but I get paid for doing it. God, you know what I mean? And, you know, that's one of the biggest things that I had to realize too. You know, like like I say, you know, take courage to walk away. You know what I mean? Like uh, in my in my neighborhood, I, uh, you know, I had a key. Yeah. You know what I mean? I had to walk away from the key. So that I was in control of, you know, in order to step in another arena. See, there's a lot of weird ass niggas that I was trying to go out of town and start doing. You know, you know what them niggas is? Them niggas is niggas that couldn't be a part of the hood. So they mind said they always wanted to be in hood, so they go somewhere else and start. Well, I could have came out here and started. I'm going to come somewhere else and start So I'm trying to get the fuck away from here. Yeah. You feel me? I'm trying. And so it takes courage. You just don't walk away from it physically, but you got to walk away from it mentally. If you don't walk away from it mentally, you know, you'll know, you be like them other bust ass niggas that go away and start hoods. You know? In other places. So, it take courage and so that's what it was. But, you know, I took, it took, you know what I'm saying, me realizing that there's no way I can hurt my enemy without hurting myself. Like, damn, the only way you can hurt this nigga is I hurt this woman. I heard this person that you become something that they don't want you to be successful. And so I realized, like, damn, I can beat them up. Every time I beat them up, or I go knock on the door and try to see what the problem was. They, could, they, they had the upper hand to get they caught up before they came here. I'm like, damn, I'm losing. Yeah. Right? But, I really, but when I realized I stepped off, I, I stopped being, I'm saying, what society wanted me to be, and I started living for myself, that's when it, my enemy became my enemy. It became more hurt. Yeah. Because now I'm succeeding. Yeah. So they motivate me. But I get you because it, at some point you do got to change because I, I mean it's only really okay. two ways out. Hey, change is inevitable, man. <laughs> <laughs> look, like I said, man, the niggas that got killed so far, man, look, the people that die natural, you know what I'm saying, they didn't have no choice. But that nigga behind that gun, they try to get away, man. I'm like, damn, he, ain't really, he wasn't trying to die. Yeah. I'm gonna say he's a legend for you. Yeah. Come on, he wasn't trying to die. We should look. We should look at them as examples. Come on, man. This nigga tried to get away. You got a chance to get away. Let's yeah. go different. Like, like, like I said, the definition is doing the same thing repetitiously. And that's why, like a lot of a lot of the older dudes, man, I really don't respect them because. If it didn't work for you, maybe they might be trying to put exactly. that right for somebody, somebody else. else. But to be honest, most older, most the people look, man, real time, this shit is like, I look at this shit as like being playing basketball, right? On the basketball team for the Lakers, you only got a you only got a few stars. These other niggas just play on the bench, you know? Yeah. And so the best, most of the star players, once you once you accomplish everything that you did, see the high, the dying in jail. Is honors in the game. Pop and get pop, all that shit is stripes. Right? And so, at, well, how many times are you gonna get popped before you realize, nigga, you get stripes? Get the fuck out the way before you yeah. die. Tell me. So how many times you got to go to jail and shit before you realize, nigga, nigga you get stripes? Nigga, get the fuck out the way. But your life done. But they do you like R. Kelly. See, the white man got to, he got a way of doing your ass. If you if, if you if you if you raise him, he gonna give you like 20 to life. Yeah. But if you like R. Kelly age, he's gonna say 30. So, so, cause a lot of niggas pass out in that court, boy. Yeah. <laughs> 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 
Boy, them niggas don't take that shit. Don't let them niggas fool you, man. Them niggas pass out like bitches. Yeah. Why you niggas say 50 years, them niggas pass out? Ooh. Yeah. 50 years life? And so, don't be, don't say that. Why you got a chance to live? That's, it. That's what I say. And, and, but you know the greatest thing, man, and I was like that at first, though. Most people in jail, they do take programs, they do shit to get out of jail. Yeah. So when they get out of jail, they start doing shit to get back in. Yeah. And so I was like that at first. Right, but you got to, but I realized you can't change that. Change is inevitable, but you can't change nothing. You got to do something different. You feel me? See, now watch this. Our minds are so powerful, and that's why I tell people, I try to tell people every day to do the thing you put your mind to. Our minds are so powerful that you, we can't stop doing that. There's a lot of people say every two years, I'm gonna stop smoking cigarettes, I'm gonna stop doing this, and they still doing it because you got your neural cortex and you got your lymphatic system. It don't pick up. When you say I'm gonna stop smoking cigarettes, you just show the cigarette if you smoke it. It don't say to stop. Just a matter of if, if our mind is programmed to uh, comprehend and stop, then we're gonna turn this back on. Yeah. And so our minds don't program it, but so you got to do something different. The only way you can stop doing this is you, okay, you gotta do something different. Why do you think that why you think that the, 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 the medical system that to stop people from using drugs, they give them another drug. That's how they when they stop people from using from here, man, they don't just them, they don't stop, them. they give them another thing or something. Like that. And so that's the same thing with life. I'm saying if you to, to stop doing this, if you want to stop doing this, you just got to change it for something that's better. I'm saying if 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 if, if this this instead of smoking cigarettes or if that was or drinking, I'm saying every time I urge them to push up, you say you just gotta do something different. Yeah. Can you talk about like being shot, like in your experience with that? Uh, when you say you got shot oh, yeah, before? Yeah, yeah, yeah man. Uh, I'll tell you this, man. Uh, that's another thing. It brought me closer to uh, God. Like like I say, man, I, I started realizing that I had a purpose to live. Like, uh, God, man, you know, like even me getting shot, you know, God told me, like an inclination, I'm saying, a thought came in my mind. You know, a lot of people think like, you know, and that's what religion teach. You know, that God is something that don't exist. Uh, he do exist, but when you die, he won't talk to you. Come on, man, you're dead now. Fuck you. You know what I'm saying? And so, I believe, me, I believe that, you know, we have two voices in our heads as individuals. One voice to say, fuck it, let's go with the crowd. And the other voice to say, no, man, go ahead and say individual and live. I believe that voice right there is the voice of God that's God. Yeah. And so I listened to that voice, and so that voice, you know, prepared me for what was going to happen. So, you know, like I say, when I, when, I, when I did get shot at, man, I got shot, man, I got hit about 20 some times. You know what I'm saying? My clothes, you know what I'm saying? Head to toe, but, I, but the only bullet that hit me, you know what I'm saying, was critical. It's supposed to it hit me in the back of the heart. Of course, it came out, but it didn't. It hit my shoulder and it went out, and so I realized. That's crazy. But then I realized, see, God knew his kids. You feel me? So God knew me. And so the second time I, the second time I got shot, God did that because he knew I used to like. He, he, see, God know he, he, he know I, I like to, he, he know I like to fight back. You know, put it like that. You yeah. feel me? And so he hit me, he hit me in my trigger finger. You feel me? So I couldn't fight back. And so he gave me the time to think, man, like go ahead and shine on me. The niggas was already mad because he had medical shot. You try to help him, nigga. Look, real talk. From from. Nigga, every nigga that I knew, from century all the way to the fifties, I, 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 I try to put the niggas on. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and that's why I don't really like to fuck with. I don't know fuck with certain niggas to man. because niggas will let their quarterback to tackle. Let the, let the Drake go. Let the King Von. Niggas let their quarterback and the point guards to attack. And so, come on, man. Niggas know what's going on with you. You let a nigga fly on a nigga that's speaking. Because I hate him. I don't fucking niggas. Hey man, because you didn't give me nothing, nigga. And you give me nothing. Not because you want to take my place, just because you don't want me to, you don't want to see me at. It's like crabs in the button. Yeah. You feel me? Nah, nah. So, yeah. I, I get you on, on that, but uh, how, how did you get into music and like how have you been making music? Uh, well I started uh, you know, uh, me and me and Bad Boy, we started and I uh, 2015, you know, like, a, you know, we, we, when, we, when we did move out this way, when we did move out this way, right, we didn't have nothing to do. 
So, you know, he was already messing with the music and doing certain things, so he kind of really inspired me, you know, just messing around and just believing. You know, I mean, I always believed that I could do anything I put my mind to, and uh, he kind of instilled that vision inside of me even more. And so that's how the music became effective. But then it got to the point, you know, like, listening to like a Nifty Hustle, right? And, uh, listening to how he was talking about how technology was, you know, influential and, uh, and stuff like that. And so, me and, me and, uh, me and Dollar, you know, he used to do video, he put a lot of videos out on uh, Facebook. Yeah. And, uh, and so, they had gave us a, a little contract, a little deal for commercials. And so, once I realized we made money from this, and so, that was all you say, you was always about your money. Yeah. Uh, you got a track with uh with Crit back. How, how did that come about? Oh uh, yeah, you know like uh, I, I got uh, some, some some folks over there from the uh, uh, area. Yeah. So, uh, and so I, you know one one thing uh, I look at Crip man. You know, so I, I picked him. You know I look at him. You know like I respect what he's doing as far as like giving back to the community. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, it's a lot of niggas that's giving back, but they ain't giving back and giving money too. You know what I'm saying? So he'll feed you and give you some money. So. That's a nigga that's really doing it out the comments of his heart. Some of them other niggas is doing it for the show. Yeah. yeah. And so I was, you know, and so that's, that's why, you know. And, and then I, and then I look at it uh, like me personally, you know what I'm saying? Me personally and a lot of niggas I know, you know what I'm saying? And, uh, they won't go take a DV. You know, I, I don't even know what they're doing it. Still in the damn time. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because you got so much homie and homie killing you. But I, I do respect him for doing that. Right? And so that was another reason why I said let me put some bread in his pocket. You know what I mean? And so uh, that was another reason why I did it. Because there's a lot of niggas so when you tell them, like, nigga, let's come talk. Can you talk to him? And he ain't coming back to me. And so he, if a nigga go over there to squad, I respect that. Yeah, no. Uh a lot of people, uh, majority of people said that was just like they respected me for even going over there. That was, yeah, yeah. I know, I, like I know some people, some people that's crips, uh, and they was like, it blood to them. It's like some people don't ever show up for the DP. Oh, come on, man. Hey, hey, <laughs> What can we expect um, coming soon as far as the music? Well, you know, well, uh, you know, right now, uh, you know, we got a, a little project coming out you know, called uh, Features, and so we just, you know, just uh, doing features with uh, just various art, 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 uh, artists in the industry, you know, and doing from right there, you know, but the thing is, you know, like, like I say, you know, like, ACM, we like, people did the music group, you know what I'm saying, we got security, Businesses and like that. We do stores, we run stores, you know. We, we have studios, you know We record people, we, we do it all, you know what I mean? And so, uh, almost like a, a King Azan or a in hotel, you know what I'm saying? More time, Italian, you know what I'm saying? Like, uh, it's more than, you know, like, uh, you can't hatch your, all your eggs in one basket. And so, basically, that's what we got for, you know what I'm saying? So, everything is always something good. But as far as the music, I'm saying, like, uh, it's going to keep pushing, you know what I mean? Like, uh, they, they sleep on us. But they may not like us, but, uh, you know, we're doing great numbers on, uh, on uh, Spotify, and so, you know, it's good. You know, we can hit a million on uh, two or three songs so, over a million, so that's good. But at the same time, you know, like, a lot of these weirdos, you know, I support this shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, a lot of dudes I know. Uh, and they do features with like some good dudes, like don't get me wrong, I'm saying, but they, they're still on your level, you know what I'm saying? But, you know, here we go, you know, we did a project with the gang, and they look at the city as being reckless, you know what I'm saying? So I'm like, man, it's, it's painful, but they don't understand the secret recipe, the, the secret of life is the one for others, what you want for yourself, you know what I mean? So if you ain't happy for the next man, I'm like, your shit ain't working. How did the project come with the gang? You know, it was successful, you know, like, uh, we was able to uh, uh, release uh, four albums, I'm saying, four, like, different, different little albums that we uh, did, but mainly, mainly with him, you know, like, uh, you know, just had him on, uh, 
know, an introduction or something maybe like that, you know, but a lot of people, you know, just the communication, they're like, you know, it's coming. Back in the days, they just talk to the game. I just want to talk to the game. Yeah. Come on. That's an accomplishment, but the niggas can't see that. Yeah. Hey, they know it. But they don't want to get out. See, it'd be niggas like that. They'll see the shit that we do. And then we go there and see the shit that we clock. You feel me? But God got a way of letting you know. It's just hate. You know, I just, it, it's so sad, man. You know, the hate is just so strong. Growing you know? up, um, you, you talked about this earlier, you talked about how you felt like, um, you said dope kind of fucked up a lot of shit. Yeah. Um, so what was that term like? And like, how, how did you even get into to selling? Like, what, what happened with that? Well, you know, like, uh, I, I come from a community where I was surrounded by I was surrounded around like, uh, like the Belvin Bollers, the Fury Ridge, and uh, I really feel and, right. and, and uh, Conchos, and so I, and the Delta. I was around and I grew up with people like that that I'm be able to see you know, on a daily basis. And so, you know, like seeing people like that, you see everything they had, and then I had some uncles, I'm saying, family members that were doing anything to it. So, that, you know, I, I seen the difference of what money would do compared to like you can feel comfortable with having money versus being broke. I mean, I've seen other members from something, you know, like even with homes in the hood, you know, like I had to make a decision too, like, do I want to be like this nigga? You know what I'm saying? Like, eat a quarter and fifty cent for a beer and a cigarette, and, uh, do I want to be like the homie that come around every once in a while and come through this to see what's going on and get on? But I really decided to be like, that nigga would not decide to be like both of them all the time. It's like I just stay away from it all. It's like it's all over, man. That's some shit I did when I was a kid, man. You know what I mean? I, I got love for it, but I don't have uh, the love for it to, to, to uh, still play with my life, you know what I'm saying? And I love my life, man. So to me, you know what I'm saying? To, to, to be out there uh, gang banging and you know you're going to keep getting hit over the shit, like, man. It's like you're crazy or something, you know, like something ain't right with you, you know what I mean? Can't love yourself if, if, you, if you're waiting to die. Yeah. You don't want to die because you run away shooting. <clears throat> so I just had to I had to just learn to love myself and uh, change, you know what I'm saying? And uh, follow my passion, you know. Is, is there anything you want to address before you get out of here? I just want to, you know, address that, you know, let people know now that you can do anything you put your mind to. But the first thing, like I said, you got to have the courage to be able to accept yourself for you. See, a lot of people, there's a lot of people that's doing shit because they want to do it. Come on, it's a lot of niggas. You say, let's go to the club, hey, fuck it. Let's, let's go do this, fuck it. You know what I'm saying? Like, there are people, they don't have their own mind. They may want to do something different, but they don't have their own mind. And so, when you have your own mind, when niggas say, let's go to the club, you say, which one? You feel me? Yeah. Or you say, uh, I'm saying, who else going? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> who going to be there? Yeah. But, so What's that's that? Who going to be there? Yeah, you know, the dumb ass nigga say, fuck you. You know what I'm saying? And that's the nigga say the nigga may be in the car with you, right? And the nigga uh, have a pistol or, or, or some stuff on the post, put him on, he's a bitch ass nigga. Because a bitch ass nigga, you know, he got dope for a gun. Bitch ass nigga ain't gonna take the case. Yeah. Right? There's a lot of cases, bitch ass nigga, he gonna, he gonna let the police decide, he gonna give it to you. So that's the nigga, that's the nigga who beat the fuck up. That's the bitch ass nigga, you feel me? But it's a nigga, but if the nigga say fuck it, he the nigga that don't tell. Because he don't wanna go in the first place. He, just, he, he don't do anything fuck it. He just, nigga tell him. Yeah, so I'm gonna go to the bay. Yeah. Pull up, CDA says. You know, um, I appreciate uh, us sitting down to do this interview, hour long, uh, very good interview. Um, give your Instagram so the people know where to follow you at. Yeah, my Instagram is uh, TVizATM, and uh, you can look at uh, look at my YouTube too. It's, uh, we're on all digital platforms. TVizATM, you can find our music on all digital platforms.
I appreciate uh, I appreciate y'all letting me pull up here, Frisco. Uh, we have uh, let them know what the cannabis club we have right now. CXX. We're about to just smoke. Pull up. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Dope interview on the way. Thank you. I appreciate it.